Another interesting result from Bahrain was that of Alpine. Well, I say interesting, they were kind of midfield. We saw some good old Fernando Alonso fire before he had that unfortunate debris issue with the front brake duct. But uh, I'm, I'm interested to know where you think Alpine are. The one thing you can say about them, they look different. They've got that huge engine cover now, uh, something they've been working on for quite a while, of course. But equally, are they out of sync now? Because they were looking really good back end of last year. You would think all they would do is just tidy it up a little bit more, a little bit more of where they were. But they've gone... Uh, pretty radical with that shape now and what they're putting behind the driver's head. I think the, the Alpine was one of the biggest talking points through testing really, ra uh, as well as people kind of keeping an eye on Mercedes, um, is you know, why is that sort of top bodywork behind the roll hoop so wide, what's going on? And I think we all knew exactly what was going on, um, but it really took it until Bahrain when we could see what has been exposed by the side pod bodywork and the uh, engine cover bodywork to you know, fully understand how they've laid out the setup there. And this really is something that Renault have been doing for, for a number of years now. And it's all uh, based around where do you want to put your cooling? So if you think a Formula One car has to cool the combustion engine, so that's oil and water, uh, and then much less um, heat comes out of the combustion engine now than it was at the end of the V8 era. But then you also have to cool the hybrid battery, the hybrid motor and the electronics. You have to cool the gearbox uh, and you've got uh, intercoolers for the turbocharger and a, a, a hydraulic cooler, which only is a sort of a, a sort of Mars bar size thing anyway. So you've got lots of coolers. So if you put them all in the side pods, you end up with these really big bulky side pods, which affects airflow around the sides of the car over to the diffuser, which can rob you of downforce and efficiency. Um, if you try to put too much uh, over the uh, center line of the car fed by the roll hoop then you could upset the flow to the rear wing but improve the airflow to the diffuser and it's this latter process that Renault have really followed for the past few years with this very wide roll hoop very wide roll hoop inlet with an even bigger inlet underneath and what they had there was one of the um, water radiators for the engine and a number of other radiators, the gearbox radiator and some of the ERS radiators. And what they chose to do with the floor regulation changes from the winter is to go much more onto centering the cooling in the middle of the car, which makes the side pods narrower and they are visibly narrower. And it means that in an odd way, they can actually do slightly less aerodynamically with them compared with the downwash setup that everyone else has fitted to their cars. Um, and what it's created is a very wide uh, engine cover. And from the first pictures that we saw, um, we can see that they've put um, one of the um, combustion engine water radiators transversely behind the engine, fed by um, uh, ducts which create the width that you see on that bodywork. And then that middle um, inlet underneath the roll hoop inlet goes through a massive duct and then feeds a huge row of coolers. Um, mounted down the spine of the engine cover, uh, which as I said is, includes uh, hybrid system coolers and the gearbox oil cooler, probably the, the, the hydraulics one in that position as well. And you know, this aerodynamically, you, we have to assume that the people at M-Stone um, in the wind tunnel have seen the data and it's not affecting rear wing performance, it's improving diffusive performance and this is the direction that they've chosen to go based on the numbers. Obviously the downside to doing this is weight. So, um, you know, while I think we all think that radiators are actually uh, quite light, um, placing that much um, a mass and radiator uh, area um, above the center line of the car really does create a center of gravity issue, which I think is the, the criticism most of the other teams and most people would um, level at this. Um, so just to kind of give you an example, as you can kind of see over my shoulder here, I've got um, uh, uh, an engine water radiator from a 2014 spec car. So that's the only radiator they need to cool the water in the car. Now that radiator alone weighs 2.7 kilograms. And I filled it with water. I sat at the sink and literally filled it up and weighed it again. It's got 1.7 kilos of water in the radiator alone. So when you add that up together, suddenly you've got this quite large mass. And when you've probably got maybe four, maybe five times that sitting above um, the engine on the Alpine, you can see where you know the center of gravity issue comes in. And again, this is something that they can simulate and they will want to offset the center of gravity impact against the aerodynamic benefit. Clearly Alpine feel that the figures stack up for them. Um, although, you know, when we think about it as you know, maybe more conventional race car uh, people, it just doesn't seem right that you would put quite so much weight, possibly, you know, 10, 15 kilos uh, above the engine. 
but so far, um, yeah, I think we have to say the jury's out on the, the, the effect. Um, they didn't run very well in Bahrain. Um, the car still seems to be going through lots of development. There's lots of parts coming for the subsequent races. They admit, oddly, bearing in mind we've been talking about cooling so much, um, that they um, are, are struggling in hot weather races as well, which um, kind of, again, is kind of counterintuitive. So I think we'll have to see how this pans out. But really, if they have messed this up this is the one season where you cannot muck about with cooling because from race one the radiators that alpine have fitted above the engine cover are now homologated and while they can homologate two sets um through the year from race one onwards that's it so if they suddenly decide they want to go back to a conventional side pod they really are effectively banned from doing so so this is a you know a big risk for them um, let's hope it pays out because i think it pays for Formula One to see people uh, at the front of the midfield. I think Alpine are one of the teams that have been on that upward trajectory, you know, starting to push towards the heels of the, the Mercedes, Ferraris, Red Bulls. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it would be good to see them competitive. So let's hope that this does pan out for them. And the issues we saw in Bahrain weren't strictly related to the uh, cooling setup. When they, when what was then Renault first t tested the car with the, the big roll hoop inlets, um, we saw, I think it was Hulkenberg had a helmet with a special uh, crown spoiler and they had lots of fins and had tried lots of things to manage the airflow uh, into the, uh, the roll hoop inlets. And we have, in fairness, with the halo as well, we saw lots of teams playing around with that. Interestingly, Alpine did test uh, one of those, what we call the boomerang, fairings um, wing type things on top of the halo in Bahrain that wasn't raced um, so that may come back so that may help them as well but uh, it's interesting the um, that, that area of design seems to have very much sort of flattened off now in terms of people playing about with the halo playing about with helmet design and shape you're not seeing the variation that we saw a few years ago so I think that whole area is kind of settled down and teams are just happy now with that flow structure uh, and aren't making any changes in that area.